This video will show you the basics of using a multimeter and a few common measurements we use on our heat pumps. Please remember to remove all jewelry while using your multimeter. Read and understand the safety precautions of your multimeter in the instructions that came with your meter. There are several different kinds of multimeters available. We'll be using this type of meter with an amp clamp for measuring amperage while testing the heat pump. This meter has an automatic range finder that automatically detects the correct range of voltage and resistance for you. These other meters are manual ranging meters. You'll have to dial in the range of voltage or resistance yourself. You may also have to plug the leads into different holes to change what you are measuring, be it AC voltage, DC voltage, resistance, or continuity. This is an older traditional analog meter that doesn't have a digital display. We don't recommend using this type of meter under heat pump. It can't measure capacitance and it's limited in other ways as well. The auto ranging meter is what we're going to use to test and measure components on the heat pump. It can do more and do it easier for you. The auto range meter also has its limitations. For example, very high voltage or amperage cannot be measured with this meter but it's great for our purposes here. You should check with the instructions that came with your meter to know the voltage and amperage limitations of your meter before you start working on the heat pump. Now, let's look at the symbols on the multimeter and the different measurements you can make. The first symbol is AC current large. This is for measuring amperage or current that is large at 70 to 100 amps or more. This meter's limit is 400 amps. So you would never measure anything more than 400 amps on this meter or you will damage the meter. We won't be measuring anything near that amount of current in the heat pump. The next symbol is for AC or DC microamperage. The limit for this meter is 2000 microamps. Any more than that and you will damage the meter. Again, we shouldn't be anywhere near this limit when working on the heat pump. You'll have to select AC or DC amperage using the select button as shown to test AC current or DC current. The next symbol is the microfarad symbol. This is used when we test for capacitance. The limit of this meter is 4000 microfarads. Any more than that and you will damage this meter. The next symbol is for continuity and for testing diodes. You will have to use the select button to switch from continuity or to test a diode as shown. The next symbol is for testing resistance or ohms. The last symbol on this dial is AC or DC voltage. You will have to use the select button to switch between AC voltage and DC voltage. The limits for this meter are 750 volts AC or 1000 volts DC. Remember your meter may have different limitations. Cat 3 meters are perfect for testing and measuring on your pool heat pumps. This meter can also test for frequency or duty cycle, which we shouldn't need to do on the heat pump. It can also test for non-contact voltage by pressing the NCV button and holding the meter near a voltage source. If voltage is present, an audible sound will be heard and this light will remain lit. The maximum button can be used to toggle between the maximum and minimum readings you have taken as this meter stores them. So if you've taken a few readings of the same component, this button will show you the max and minimum ratings of your tests. If you press and hold the button for two seconds, you will return to live reading of your meter. The meter also has a flashlight that you turn on and off by pressing and holding the hold button. This also turns on the backlight for the display. This also has a good place to store your test leads as you walk around the work site. It has a holder on the fixed clamp to hold your test lead and help you in taking certain readings. Your meter will be just a little different. Hopefully this video will help you in using the specific meter that you have. The first step in using your multimeter to test the voltage of the contactor is to shut off all power going to your heat pump. Then unscrew the two screws at the bottom sides of the heat pump to remove the front cover. Carefully remove the front cover and place it out of the way. Then unscrew the two screws holding the metal enclosure for the contactor as shown.
Now turn on the power to the heat pump and get ready to test your voltage at the contactor. Set your meter for AC voltage. This is an auto range meter. If your meter is not auto range finding, you should set it for 200 volts AC current. With this type of meter, you'll also have to attach the leads correctly. Here the black lead goes to common. In fact, it will always be in common. The red lead goes to voltage, and it's also labeled ohms, and also continuity. The red lead touches the right bottom of the contactor, and the common black lead touches the left bottom of the contactor, as shown. Here we are reading 238.6 volts, which is normal. Now we take a second reading and get 238.7 volts. This is exactly the voltage we should have. Now we will test the fan motor for amperage. First, turn all power off to the heat pump. To find your fan motor wires, you can look at the wiring diagram that should be inside your heat pump. Or you could follow the wires from the fan motor. Or just look at the wires coming through this hole next to the contractor. These are all from the fan motor. The black wire coming through this hole is the common we need to test. We're going to cut that cable tie to get access to the fan wire. You may see this red wire not connected to anything. This wire is not used. Please leave it alone and don't worry about it. It's just an extra wire off the transformer. It's not used at all. Attach your amp clamp to the fan wire as shown. Turn your dial to DC amperage and turn your power on. Here we are measuring 2.36 amps. If you look on the side of the fan motor, you can see the amps that the motor needs. This motor says 4 amps. That's the maximum amperage allowed. We're measuring 2.36 amps, so we're good. If you're within range, your fan motor is running properly. You can also see on your fan motor the range of the fan capacitor. Then you can test the capacitor to make sure it's within this proper range. Now, let's go over how to test a capacitor. The capacitors are located together here. The small one is the fan capacitor. The larger one is the compressor capacitor. To start, carefully remove the leads on the fan capacitor and ground the capacitor with a screwdriver to discharge any stored electricity in the capacitor. Touch the terminals of the capacitor with a screwdriver with an insulated handle and touch the back case of the heat pump as shown. Next, set your multimeter dial to microfarad or capacitance. Touch the black lead to one terminal and the red lead to the other terminal and then just wait a bit to get your reading. On these capacitors, it doesn't matter which terminal you touch with the black lead and which terminal you touch with the red lead, as long as they're on separate terminals. Now, look on the side of the fan capacitor and you'll see the rating of that capacitor. This one is 7.5 microfarads, plus or minus 3%. Our reading on the multimeter was 7.48 microfarads, which is in the range of the plus or minus 3%, so this capacitor is good. You'll see voltage specifications on the side of the capacitor as well. Any motor that turns will create voltage, even though it takes voltage to move the motor. This capacitor is rated for 440 volts, which is the limit for taking voltage from the motor. Never replace a capacitor with a lower voltage rating than the one on the capacitor you're changing. You can't replace, for example, a 440 voltage capacitor with a 375 voltage capacitor. Now, return the two brown leads to the poles on the fan capacitor. One lead per pole, as shown. Now, let's do the same test on the compressor capacitor. Remove the two yellow leads carefully with the needle nose pliers with insulated handles. Then discharge the capacitor by using a screwdriver with an insulated handle to touch the two terminals of the capacitor and the back wall of the heat pump as shown. This will discharge any stored electrical current. Now take the black lead and the red lead and touch each terminal separately. 
it doesn't matter which lead goes to which terminal on these capacitors. Here we have a reading of 79.8 microfarads. On the side of the larger fan capacitor, we see it has an 80 microfarad rating, plus or minus 5%. So this capacitor is good. If our readings were over or under the plus or minus 5%, we would want to replace the capacitor. Sometimes when a capacitor is bad, they will bloat or swell up like these. Anytime you see a swollen capacitor like these, they should be replaced immediately. Now, return the yellow leads, one to each pole, and you're done. It makes no difference what lead goes to what pole on these capacitors. Just ensure that each yellow wire is on a separate terminal of the capacitor. Here we're testing an older style control board. This board has no lights and it seems to be dead. We're going to test for voltage going to the board. There are three wires that power this board. They're coming from the transformer. If you look at the wiring diagram inside your unit, you'll see these wires coming from the transformer to the board. Turn your meter to DC voltage. If you need to set the range manually, please do so. Here we're hitting the select button to change from AC to DC voltage. If you have a manual multimeter, you'll have to dial in to 20 volt DC current, as shown. Then make sure your test leads are in the correct holes. Here the black common stays in the hole that it's in, and we make sure that the red lead goes into the voltage hole, as shown. Now carefully using a needle nose plier, remove these three wires as shown. The white wire is neutral, so here we're testing the red lead to the yellow wire and the black lead to the blue wire. We have power going to the unit, yet our meter reads no power. The problem is the board is not getting power from the transformer, or possibly a bad breaker, but the board may be okay. Now in this example, we're showing voltage to the board, yet the board is not working. This board needs to be replaced. To begin, test the start and running amperage of the compressor. Turn your dial to measure amperage. This meter will auto-detect AC and DC current and the range. You attach your amp clamp to the black wire coming from the left upper connection on the contactor. This wire is the common and will almost always be black. This is on the load side of the contactor. Once your amp clamp is secured around the black compressor wire, turn your power on. There should be a time delay of a few minutes before power goes through the contactor. Then your meter should measure amperage. We're measuring 22 amps here. Now test for continuity between the terminals of the compressor. To access the terminals, swing the metal rod down holding the plastic terminal cover as shown. If the meter indicates there is continuity on the terminals, that means one of the windings inside the compressor has shorted to ground. At that point, the compressor will need to be replaced. The compressor has a 10-year limited warranty, and Aqua Comfort will cover the compressor part only. The homeowner will still be responsible for the labor and shipping to replace the compressor. The compressor must be replaced by a refrigeration certified technician or at an Aqua Comfort service station. If the meter does not indicate there is any continuity on the terminals, it's still possible the compressor is bad. If the compressor is seized, it could also trip the circuit breaker. To test the windings, you will need to switch your multimeter to read ohms. Once you do that, you'll need to determine which windings are start, run, and common. There should be something on the terminal cover that indicates what each terminal is. As a rule, the black wire is almost always common, the red wire is almost always run, and the remaining wire is almost always start. Once you have identified the terminals, you will need to test them. Now carefully remove the wires from the terminals, giving you access for your multimeter, as shown.
You can test them by putting one probe on the run terminal and one probe on the common terminal. Then record the reading from your meter. Now put your probes on the common terminal and the start terminal and record the readings from your meter. Lastly, put your probe on the start terminal and run terminal and record the reading you get on your meter. Here is the formula you will need to use to verify that the windings are still good in the compressor. R plus C plus S plus C equals R plus S. For example, R plus C equals 0.4 ohms and S plus C equals 1.6 ohms which equals S plus R at 2 ohms. If the readings you get do not add up in the formula, that indicates the windings are bad. In that case, you will need to replace the compressor. Next, confirm the gas type on the data plate and the age of the heater. Stop working and call our priority service line for more information. Thank you for watching.